Hi, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and I have Abigail and Hope with me today. And we're gonna be showing you how to build bridesmaid bouquets. And we're gonna be doing three different techniques to show you that they don't have to all be matchy-matchy. Uh, when it comes to bridesmaid bouquets, you want them to be sisters, but not twins. Uh, personally, bridesmaid bouquets are one of my favorite things to build because it's less stressful than building a bridal bouquet. Um, there's less product to use, so it just goes by a lot faster. And uh, I think we can get started. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the lay down technique. That's when I will lay the greenery on the table and arrange my flowers and then I'll pick it up and adjust. Hope will be doing just a traditional hand build method and Abigail is going to be building in the cylinder. That's where she's gonna place the flowers in the cylinder, roughly arrange them how she likes it and at the end she'll pick it up and make some slight adjustments. So there's options there because I know some people get a little bit nervous about hand building things if you haven't done it before. So you can try these techniques as well. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. And I just wanna say that one thing that makes things go faster is to have your recipes pre-pulled. So if you notice at the beginning of our video, we had our bouquet vases out, we had the recipes in their vase ready to go. Um, I spend a lot more time um, prepping my flowers and pulling the recipes than I actually do building the arrangement. So on the lay down technique, I always like to start by laying out my greenery. And we're gonna build this in a more like a organic style, not extremely wild, just kind of a little bit loose, kind of has like a garden hand-picked vibe to it. So I always just start with the lay down technique, getting my greenery down. And she's doing the same. She likes to start with her greenery and Abigail is also beginning with her greens. It's just like a good, good way to get going. <laughs> When I was a new florist, I would just grab one singular flower and then try to build around that and it always just kind of created some awkwardness. So just like you've heard me discuss before, I build on different planes. And we have a mirror here at the end that will check what we're doing and if we like it. So when you're building in a cylinder or a mason jar, you will probably have to cut your stem links um, because they'll be different sizes. So if you notice, Abigail is kind of trimming as she goes so it falls around the place that she wants it to. And so at the end, when I've pretty much figured out where I want my placement, I pick it up into my hand and I'm gonna adjust it from here. And I typically like to look at it in the mirror because it gives me like a much different perspective. So at this point, most of the work is done and we can just adjust and hand build. This is something that you can show your helpers and maybe if all of your bridesmaids are helping you with the, the flowers, which would be awesome. Um, everyone can pick the technique that they feel most comfortable with. And of course, we always encourage you to practice with cheap grocery store flowers if you're feeling a little bit nervous about it. For bridesmaid bouquets, I really recommend building it one-sided if you can because those girls will lay down those flowers all evening. And so if it's completely rounded and she's laying it down on a different side every single time, then they can look a little, a little rough at the end of the night. All right. 
happy with it. <laughs> there we go. Because I can never stop adding flowers, I'll just add all of them. <laughs> So to finish this off, we'll be using a rubber band. You can use stem tape, you can use waterproof floral tape. Um, you know that I like zip ties, but because I'm out of zip ties, uh, I'll use a rubber band and that's when I find one strong flower, like a rose, and I hook it, wrap it around. Probably be easier if I cut that shorter. And I hook that flower again. And so it holds things in place while allowing me to adjust things slightly. Now, you heard me say that we want it to be sisters and not twins, and that's still accurate, but you want the links to be the same. So I like to cut mine shorter, and if you like short, then have everybody cut it short, but it will look weird if some people have long stems and some people have short, so you'd like to probably be consistent with that. So one other reason to cut your stem short is you can have these bridesmaids repurpose their flowers as like a centerpiece. So this is our mint julep cup. Any cup or vase that runs around three to four inches is really nice, but you do have to have them pretty short. So after the ceremony, when they walk into the reception, you can have this at like little bistro tables or the head table if you have something pretty for them to put their vase down and then it, it works for a second centerpiece. Very good. Okay, so now we'll show you how to tie it off with ribbon. Okay, a common question that we get asked is about ribbon. So we're gonna show you three different ways to tie the ribbon. I'll just show you a traditional wrap. Hope will do like a really nice hang. And Abigail is going to do a bow because I can't tie bows to save my life. Um, okay, so one thing that is very much a necessity is to have really good sharp scissors. Um, anyone knows who's ever worked with me I have one set of scissors for ribbon and they can't be used on anything else. So uh, there's nothing like more maddening when you're trying to cut like really delicate satin ribbon and it's like fraying on you. So I'm coming in with this silk ribbon, wrapping it a few times. I like it a little bit messy. If you feel a bit more OCD, you can make it extremely smooth, but I like a little bit of crinkle to it. And then I like to put the pins in the back. And so what I'm gonna do is pull the end and fold it under because it finishes better. Pull the sleeve off. And when you do this method, you will need a pin. And this is where the pixie pins are so handy. So these are much shorter than a standard straight pin. And after years of being a florist and working with those long pins, they go through your bouquet and stab your hand on the other side. So I really like to avoid those. I never need a long straight pin, like ever in my life, probably ever again. <laughs> so I love the pixie pins and we sell these. Let's see, Abigail has done a beautiful bow and she's cutting the ribbon at an angle. And the reason why people do that, it's, it's not only prettier, but when you cut kind of against the, the salvage, it won't fray as easily. If you cut a straight line, the ends will fray pretty quickly. And Hope did like a nice drape. And she probably used about what, a yard? Is that about right? Not even. So for bridesmaid bouquets, I usually average probably a half yard. If you want a longer drape, then you'll want to go to like the yard to a yard and a half. So let's hold up our bouquets and let's put them together. So you can see they're all a little bit different. They're sisters, not twins, but once all your gals are in like a similar shade of dress and they're holding them together, they will look very cohesive and consistent. And that took us about 10 minutes to build. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at hello at Flower Moxie. The recipe and everything that we used is below as well as a link to our website for you to buy your DIY flowers. Thank you so much.